Hi guys, welcome to Empower, and my name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much, as usual, for watching my YouTube channel. So this is the last video, actually, of my nurse empowerment webinar, and I'm so excited that you've made it this far. And if you happen to stumble on this video as the first video, don't worry. This video you can watch as a standalone video, but I do encourage you to look below in the description section because I have all of the information how you can view all of the other videos. I also have information about a scholarship giveaway that I'm going to be having, which is my first ever scholarship for $600 and it's to help encourage LPNs to get their RN or BSN or RNs to get their BSN. Guys, empowering yourself with the right degree to move forward in your career is priceless. And this is a program that I'm really putting my name behind because unlike a lot of other programs out there that overpromise and underdeliver, this could be the only exception. They really care and they really put the energy and effort into making sure you are successful. Without any further ado, let Let's go into the conclusion video. And again, I'm so excited that you've made it this far. It shows so much about what kind of person you are. All right, guys, to your health and happiness in nursing. Love you so much. Congratulations for making it all the way through the program. I really hope that you enjoyed this video seminar and that you learned a lot and also had fun in the process. So you might be saying to yourself, you know, I really loved a lot of the tips that were shared in this program, but I have no idea if I can make something like this stick. And I can relate to you more than anybody else because there are so many things that I've started and stopped, and there are so many times when I have given up. But through the years, I've actually accomplished quite a bit, and when I started to be able to start things and finish things, I realized that there were a lot of things that I was doing that helped me do that. So one of the first things that I did was I started looking at my life in decades and half decades. Having a long-term view of my life was a lot more therapeutic than thinking that I needed to do something gigantic and only had a year to do it. So giving myself a longer time to finish the goals that I set helped me realize that the plans that I had for myself were possible. So whenever you're thinking about your life in half decades or decades though, we tend to get overwhelmed with our age or, or where we're at in our life. And so what I usually do to get over that fear is I usually look for people that are much older than me and are still doing things that are exciting them. So I know it's sometimes good to look at celebrities, but you know, celebrities can have like tons of money and tons of plastic surgeries that you know might just not be available to us. So sometimes it's not always the best place to look. But one place that I really do like to look, if you guys ever go to Hay House, um, Louise Hay is the founder of Hay House. She has a lot of really great role models on her website. They write a lot of books. They're people that are very active, very loving, and and many of them are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond. Louise Hay herself is in her 80s, and she will constantly say that this is going to be my best decade yet. She's vital, she's energetic, and she really is a role model for me, and possibly she could be a great role model for you as well. So that's what I do to get rid of that fear that, oh my gosh, I'm already so old, which, you know, we're really not, but anyways, um, I'm so old, and you know, I just don't know if I can do this. So that's, that's one thing that I do. Another thing that I do is, I expect the plateaus. I expect the periods where I get maybe negative feedback or I expect the periods where I feel like I'm not making any progress because when you first start your journey, you're gonna feel like you're going so fast that nothing will ever stop you. And that is a great feeling. And that, if we could have that feeling all the time, that is the spice of life. But eventually it may come to a little bit of a plateau but just keep in mind that that period is very temporary and you just have to kind of break through again and then you're going to start growing rapidly once again. So just remember during those periods where you feel like absolutely nothing's happening, you're just a few steps away and you will start growing fast once again. The other thing that I do to make my personal goals last, now this is a little bit controversial because a lot of people say the exact opposite. So I want you to kind of think about what works for you. But one thing that I do is I keep my most um, pressing goals or my most um, sensitive goals, I keep them very private because, and I keep them private, not all the time, but until they're about maybe 75% done. And then I share it with the world or, you know, via my husband or via my friends. 
but when I share it with them, I already know that it's so close to done, or sometimes I'll wait till even it's completely done, and then I'll share it with them. So knowing that it's already pretty much done helps me realize that I'm going to finish it. So a lot of other people say, and like I said, just kind of feel what works with you. A lot of people say that you should actually tell everybody your goals, and then everybody else will hold you accountable. And I think that it depends on who is in your life and your type of person. Um, me personally, I found that what works best for me is what I just told you. <laughs> but um, some people, depending on who it is, may have people around them that are very supportive and may have a lot of experience in that area that you want to grow in. And so in that case, I would definitely encourage you to share your stories and to share your dreams and your goals with that person. But if you do have people around you that may be negative or it might not all also be thinking positive, then you might want to think about keeping it to yourself until you are strong enough to share it with the people around you. And also, I think having one goal first and foremost, which was kind of the hidden voice throughout the whole program, I'm not sure if you could tell or not, but it was really just to feel good. We're not out here to change everybody else. We're not out here to change the world all at one time. We are here to just feel good and by us feeling good, it will attract more goodness into our life and it will attract more positivity and it will make other people feel good as well. But the simple underlying concept was for us to feel good. So for us to be more in positive thinking, for us to be able to negate any negativity, for us to be healthy and vital is at the absolute root to that. So when you are not feeling good, it's a good time to ask yourself, why am I not feeling good? And that's an okay question because I really think that it's okay to feel good. You have permission to feel good from me. So whenever you don't feel good, just ask yourself, why am I not feeling good? And some of the reasons why I found was maybe I was dating the wrong person. I specifically remember um, I was dating one guy and he was a really nice guy. There was nothing wrong with him, but he liked to watch a lot of television, especially a lot of football. And I've never watched really that much television. And one day I just said to myself, why am I not feeling good? And immediately this answer came to me and it said, he's not the one, you're better off without him. And so immediately I knew that I needed to break off the relationship. And so I broke up with that current boyfriend. And listening to my inner voice was really hard because I had never done anything like that before, ever, ever, ever. I have always been the type of girl that just wants to please everyone Everybody, especially a boyfriend. So me listening to my voice was just incredible. And actually, when I did say, I said, you know what? I don't even want to be at his apartment anymore. I'd rather just go home. And I told him that. I said, I think I'm going to go home. He was so astonished. He was like, what? You are doing what you want to do, I guess? That's not what he said, but I think that's what he was thinking deep down. And I just said, yeah, I'm going to go home. And, you know, on the drive home, thinking about it, I was like, you know, I did. This is like the first thing that I ever did where I really listened to my inner voice. And that's just one example of me listening to my inner voice. But um, just try to start asking yourself, why don't you feel good? Because you deserve to feel good and there's nothing wrong with feeling good. And so when you ask a question, then hopefully you'll find an answer. So maybe another reason for not feeling good is maybe you ate something that took all of the energy out of your body. So we each have different bodies and I really do believe that we each metabolize things differently. So you really want to be aware of what you're eating and potentially things that can make you feel bad. So again, that was just like the underlying message of the entire program is it's okay to feel good. It's accepted to feel good. And if you feel good, then you're more likely to have your patients feel good. And you're more likely that your coworkers will feel good and the administration will feel good about you. So it can just be one big ripple effect. Another tip that I want to give you to help these new goals and new patterns stick is it's got to be a daily process. You need to immerse yourself into positive things. So what I've done for you is I've created audios for all of the videos for each of you to download. So all you have to do is click on the link and it will start downloading to your computer. I do recommend using a computer and then you can transfer it to your device. I'm not sure if it will work on an iPad. Um, it may, but just try it out and see if it works for you. 
you. And if it doesn't, then just go ahead and when you are around your computer or if, if you don't have a computer and somebody else has a computer, then download the audios onto that computer and then transfer them to whatever device that you want to listen to your audios on. I personally am obsessed with these little cheap MP3 players. The specific one is a SanDisk. I'm not sure if you have that in whatever country you're in, but it's just a really cheap MP3 device. And I like this instead of using my phone because first of all, if you have an iPhone, the iPhone, for some reason, as far as sharing purposes going, they have all kinds of locks and it's very difficult to have your songs play. The other good thing about this is it's really easy to transfer the files onto cheap devices like these and you won't get interruptions if there's a phone call or a text. So you really can just pay attention to just what you want to listen to. So the last tip that I'm going to give you as far as how to make these steps and goals stick is to track your progress. So right now, buy a calendar or start using Google calendars and just set your goals for the next five or 10 years and just make a day one mark right here on this day and just make Make sure that you know you check back at least once a week if you can do it more often then that would be better but make sure you're tracking your progress and make sure you're growing and remember some weeks you're gonna have just explosions of growth and then other weeks it's just gonna be a little bit of growth but as long as you're going a little bit high even with the plateaus you should be able to grow a little bit so all right guys stay healthy stay blessed and I really hope that you did indeed enjoy this program so go out there be the best nurse that you possibly can be and you will start infecting the world with your positivity. I love you guys so much. Bye.